So, let me tell you my 100 days story. Of how I ended up in a cave, alone, in a custom world, on the brink of war. Our story begins, joining a server with a dark history. A 500 day old server, where past players were not so lucky to survive. This 100 days is the murder island, 500 days later. And two admins have asked a bunch of players to join the server, to participate in this hardcore series. I was one of those players. The two admins we are referring to are Apex MC and Dapper. Every player who spawned on the island got a book. It said, welcome to the experiment. They said that this server is for their entertainment and we'll make sure it stays like that. And they said a simple message, keep us happy. And in the book contained a clue about the past people that have played on the server. It said, you guys aren't the first people. Head towards 00, zero to see the remains of the previous experimentations. The book also read saying, this is a social experiment to see what happens when people have limited resources. Oh, and what's that? It says that this video is sponsored by Monster Legends. Today's video is sponsored by Monster Legends. A free to play game available on both Android and iOS through the link in the description. With this game, you start off by building your monster habitats, collecting gold and gems to build your perfect territory. Collect monsters and boost them through heated battles and achieving higher levels. Feed your monsters to gain higher levels and create stronger monsters. You can even breed two monsters together to make your own unique monster to defeat your enemies in future battles. With a wide range of different PvP modes of dungeons, two adventure maps, new events and adventures can be discovered weekly. The adventure never ends my friends. Fight in real time battles against your friends and even epic team wars allowing you to unlock exclusive monsters. Do you think you have what it takes to win? So what are you waiting for? Download Monster Legends today using my link in the description below and claim your free $30 special reward of food, gold and gems. And even the epic monster Noreen. With his wooden sword and shield, you can take them all on. Thanks again to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video. I knew exactly what the admins wanted. They wanted chaos and they wanted us to all turn against each other. I knew that if we were going to survive this 100 days, we'd have to play together. And we would have to stay peaceful amongst each other because we are the threat. Not mobs, not lava, but other people are the threat. We are dangerous when left unchecked. At this current time, we were all in a Discord. All 20 of us were sitting in here. It was chaotic, but I tried to control the group. I tried to gather them up on the Mushroom Island so I could speak to them all before they ran off their separate ways. I gave them a speech and said that if we were gonna survive this, we all needed to work together or things would just turn to chaos. Whatever happened 500 days ago didn't end well. And we hopefully weren't going to meet the same fate as them. Since it was early days, everyone was optimistic and everyone wanted to be a team. Everyone agreed and we were all on the same sides. We all wanted to survive together. Or that's what I thought. Because as this series goes on, it's going to slowly degrade. But you guys already know that. The first thing we wanted to do was we wanted to visit 00. We wanted to see what the past experimentation was. We were all curious. So we found the nearest island with trees and began making boats. We then set across the open sea. Heading towards the center of the world. Later on day one, we found land. This was zero zero. This was the center. Straight away we could see old remains of the past players that have played in the server.
This island looked lifeless. Like I hadn't seen life in a long time. We even found a horse that had been wandering the island for what looks like years. We quickly put him out of his misery. We wanted to explore the island, but with night falling, we took refuge in a house close by. We patched it up to stop the mobs getting in, and our first plan of action was to feed the weak. A lot of people were starving, and some players were close to death. As a group, we organized ourselves, attempting to feed the weakest first. But we didn't have long in the house until the admins got bored. They put up a sign saying, leave this now. And the admins were incredibly impatient. Striking down lightning on top of all of us. I don't know how we didn't lose a single soul, but I am on two hearts and I am close to death. Everybody scrambled and started running. I organized the team to head back to the boats. The admins clearly didn't want us living on this island. They had already seen people live here and they don't want a repeat of what happened. They must want something new. They drove us off the island. I tried to do a head count to see if we had everyone here and I felt like we were missing someone. So I headed back to the island to have a look. But the admins weren't letting us go anywhere near it. Striking down lightning to show don't go here. If a person was lost, it's up to him to survive on his own. Good luck to him. We decided to start journeying far away. Because the admins didn't want us anywhere near here. And also all the resources, all the sunken ships had been plundered by the past players that had played here. So we knew if we wanted resources, we needed to head far out. But this journey wasn't going to be easy. We had a serious food shortage. But we were all determined to get to our new settlement. We journeyed across the world. Taking small breaks to gather resources and get little bits of food. But it wasn't long until we were on the move again. The admins were constantly taunting us, telling us to keep moving. I don't know how far they wanted us to go. As night was falling on day three, we found a desert temple. And we decided to try and take refuge in here. A lot of us couldn't run, so mobs were a huge threat. This night wasn't easy though. The admins kept making holes into the desert temple so that mobs could rush through. We just kept patching and we did our best. Later on that night, things started to calm down. The admins stopped trolling us and we were able to quickly organize ourselves and feed the weakest. All the weak lined up against the wall and we did our best to try and feed them. On the day four morning, we headed out. We weren't able to sprint, but we kept walking through the desert, still trying to find a place to sell. But on the day four afternoon, we ran into a problem. A player had gone missing. He just vanished. Two players in a boat went out to search for him, but didn't find him. All that was left was just his boat. But with this commotion, we let our guard down. And a swamp zombie got rip months. He was impaled by a trident. The first person to die on this great journey. We didn't even have time to grieve. We had to get out of there. We left the body behind. On day five, we hit land. This land was starting to look a lot more habitable. 
this journey was nearly over. The player that vanished returned out of thin air. I tried to speak to him, but he didn't say much. It was suspicious, but I left it there. We also couldn't continue our journey without making a burial site for months. Rest in peace. It just showed us how dangerous this journey was. Later on that day, we found a village. And this village hadn't been touched by the previous players. This means we were in an area where 500 days ago, the past occupants didn't come to. We desperately raided this village for resources. And then we continued on. When just over the river, by the village, we found the place that we wanted to settle. We were going to make this our home. We even stood here for a while waiting for the admins to strike lightning down. But nothing happened. We will call this our home. All together and unified. We're going to survive. It wasn't so long until the admins awakened. Giving us a so-called gift. The gift was basically telling us that we can only use stone, wood and leather items only. As they refer to it, keeping us in the Stone Age. All I saw it as was making it harder to survive. Not being able to make iron armor, diamonds. It just makes mobs more of a threat. I feel like they were punishing us for playing all together. I gave the book to Jack. Jack gave the book to another person and it spread like wildfire. Everyone knew we were stuck in the Stone Age. The village was coming along nicely. The only problem is that we still had a food shortage. With this many players, it's a lot of mouths to feed. And I knew the best way of feeding people without burning too much energy would be fishing. But to do that, we needed to find some spiders for string to make the rod. So on the day nine night, I headed out looking for spiders. And I managed to find enough spiders to be able to make myself a rod and jack. We would hopefully get enough food for the village altogether. But the food shortage was causing tension in the camp. Because an argument broke out between food. I'm not exactly sure what happened. But there were two players scrapping. And out of rage, Emerald Horn was murdered by Brody. You could look at him and see the guilt in his eyes straight away. He regretted his actions. He was hungry and we knew it. We all were. Desperate for food. But that doesn't mean you get to take someone away. Actions that he just took was probably the demise of the last players that played this server. We asked Brody to quietly come into the forest with us. I think he knew exactly what was about to happen. But he knew if he ran, he was dead anyway. I knew what I had to do, even though I didn't want to do it. But we had to be strong. I had to show others that I was a strong leader and this wouldn't stand. An eye for an eye. Strangely, when I got back to camp, no one even spoke about it. Everyone was just acting like life went back to normal. I think because everyone agreed. That the actions that I took were completely justified. With the fishing rod made, it was time to get fishing. This means now that all the village was working on collecting different types of food. And in no time, we would have enough food to be able to not worry about it anymore. We all just had to keep working hard. While fishing, I noticed that Caden was just watching us. Not saying anything. He hadn't spoke since he'd vanished on our journey. He intrigued me and I wanted to talk to him more. But this was the last time that I ever saw Caden. Will I ever see him again? While fishing, Jack had spotted that Emil had dropped iron boots near the riverbed. We weren't allowed to make iron. And it's like he was trying to make other players pick it up. So that they could get punished. After this I started watching the mill. 
I noticed how he was stumbling around the camp. And I saw that he was interacting with a chest. He looked very suspicious. And he wasn't doing a great job. To me, it's almost like he wanted to get caught. I went over to investigate the chest. And to my shock, I saw that he had put an iron helmet inside. I don't know what he was up to, but he was trying to sabotage this camp. Quickly, I ran down. I grabbed the boots and I grabbed the helmet. I knew exactly where to get rid of this evidence. And I burned them as quick as I could before the admins could notice. This is when myself, Jack and Mikey left the camp to have a chat about what we could do with a mill. Jack and I wanted to quietly murder him. He was trying to sabotage our camp after all, but Mikey made the valid point that he hadn't done any harm to any player yet. And the people of the community would just think that we murdered him and could raise their arms against us. So we went back to the camp with the best solution we could think of. We confronted a mill and we told him to follow us. Of course, he was hesitant. Who wouldn't be? We decided that the best option was to banish a mill, and we told him that. He denied all of his actions, but then not long after, he admitted to it all. And he went his separate way. I knew that it was unrealistic to think that peace could stay. But I was doing my best to make sure I can keep that happening. That's when Apex shortly turned up. Proven in some way that they're always watching. We went back to the camp and we gathered as many people as we could. And we told them the truth. That we had banished a mill and everything that he was up to. If this was going to work, we'd all have to trust each other. No secrets. This was when someone raised the alarm about Caden. Where was he? He was on the server. But he wasn't here. No one had seen him for a few days. Going back to a little bit of fishing, I managed to fish myself out a Piercing 4, Unbreaking 3, Fortune 3 book. But there was one slight problem. We were currently stuck in the Stone Age. So this book was rendered useless, but will be really handy for when we're allowed to advance. But later on that day, I had all the food we needed. Everyone was doing great. The food shortage had been solved. After the food crisis was sorted, the village started thriving. We started coming alive, working as a group, and over the days, the village really formed. It was going fantastic. I've never had a better bunch of people to survive with in my life. This was really looking positive, and it felt great. On day 26, I woke up in my nasty house. It wasn't the best build I'd ever done, but I wanted to make sure that I kept it to the village theme. When I logged onto the server, it was early morning, and it was only few of us on. Jamie, Jack, and myself decided to go on a bit of an interesting mission. It was early morning. So we expected the admins not to be on. Now we can't tell when they are, because they're in Vanish. But we took a guess they weren't. And we decided that we would head back to the center of the world. Back to the island that the admins didn't want us on. Why? Because we thought we could find loot and treasure from the previous players 500 days ago. Technically, if we find that, we won't be breaking the rules. Because we didn't make it. We just found it. We were being cheeky. 
As we're about to hit the water to head to the island, we notice that Rip Mump's grave had been changed. Almost evil looking. Someone had clearly messed with it. And we knew who. It was definitely the admins because of this shovel. No players could do this. This was some sort of plugin or command. I don't know what they were up to. But they had done something. After we were done investigating it. We continued to the murder island. And after a few days. We landed. On the island. No lightning. No commotion. It was still. This island was eerily quiet. Who knows what happened here. But whatever it did. It must have not ended great. Legends say that one survivor managed to leave the island, and everyone else perished. But who knows? We stumbled into a graveyard. We found a grave of a past player. We checked their burial chest for loot, but didn't find much. We made our way on top of this hill, and we found a chest. Left by the admin. With a clue to the never portal. Saying that it's located in the Badlands, which is a mesobiome. But little did we know that this never portal would exist in another world entirely. One that we're soon heading towards. We just didn't know it yet. As we were making our way home, this is when everything started to crumble. It was later on in the day, everyone was on, and the discord erupted. We're being attacked, they said. Sheer panic broke out. And it was every player for themselves. Phoebe's even killing Spiritfall in the chaos. It was hard to make out exactly what was going on and what exactly caused this. But as we got closer, it started to become clear. And Miller had returned with his new gang. The admins had helped him out. Gave him the resources he needed. To cause chaos. And make it fun for the admins. The admin knew that we were beating them at their own game. I got close to the village and Jack and Jamie left me. They didn't want to come in. I tried to tell them that I wanted to get my Fortune 3 book. It was buried in a chest in my house. That's what I know was fatal. He was wearing netherite armor. This was the first time seeing this player. I don't know how he got this armor. Because we were the first person to find the clue about the never portal. I knew this would happen. I wasn't surprised. I was just surprised about how savagely they did it. They had no respect for what we had made. But this is an experiment after all. This is what the admins want. They want to be entertained. I snuck in and got my book. I so badly wanted it because I knew the Fortune 3 pickaxe would come in handy. It allowed me to get diamonds and attempt to get revenge as fast as possible. I started making my way over to the farming sector to get as much resources as I could so that we wouldn't have another food shortage. But Emil and his gang was already over there. And one of them was in Netherite. That's when I noticed more of them. And they were in iron armor. The admins had clearly allowed them to advance faster than us. And they were a more powerful civilization than us at the moment. And I had to let them do what they had to do. This is hardcore after all and I can't die. That's when I noticed Ripmonts lagging behind. The admins had revived him. Now the grave makes sense why it was changed. I must admit, I like the little details that the admins put into the show. It really makes it come alive. Slept in the bed quickly. So it was only players who were a threat to me, and not mobs on top of that. I knew at this point that every village member had gone. The village was broken, fractured, and split to pieces. 
They had all formed their own groups and they were now in their own discords. Jack and Jamie had left me. I was in a discord by myself. I was gathering what I could. I gathered as much food as I could take and I started heading back to the main village area. Thinking that Emil and his gang was now gone, I wanted to get to our storage area to see if there was anything else I could scavenge. But as I got closer, I could see Emil and his gang were still in the area. This is when I became very close to death. They were coming closer to me. All I had was the trees as cover. But I could hear the fire behind me. I had to stay still. I knew any movement or on crouching, I would be seen. I got lit on fire, but luckily I was able to stay crouched, and there was a mushroom covering me. It looked to me that Emil and his gang were leaving. This was getting interesting. And just as quickly as they came, they left. They were complete savages. Everything that we had worked on was destroyed. They didn't have any respect. Later on that day we got informed that the admins were taking us to a new world. One where we could conquer the lands and show who really is the dominant clans. But I don't care about all of that. My goal now and for the foreseeable future is tracking down and hunting anyone who was responsible for this attack. And I would kill them all one by one, leaving a mill ruse last. Bring on the new world. Overnight, the old world vanished and a new one began. That's right, we're in a new world and it's custom, which you can find the link for down in the description below. But the admins have given us this world. With a few rules, which I'll explain very soon. But the admins allowed us to choose where we wanted to spawn. I chose the forest area in the middle of the map, hoping that's where everyone would go and I would find more people. And we could take a crack at making another settlement again. And trying to keep the peace. And also, just so I'm not alone. Straight away, I did the Minecraft things. I grabbed wood and I killed some animals. I was fortunate enough that the admins gave us a bit of a starter kit. But I originally spawned here because I wanted to find other players. I could have went on Discord and I could have asked who's around. But I wanted to find people organically. And to make this interesting. I knew there were other people alone like me and I knew there were people also in groups. I was more looking for the loners. So that we could band together and have a common cause. And that's surviving. But the first day in this new world, I didn't see any signs of life other than the animals I had slain. But I was fortunate enough to find a cave. And this is where I'll be calling my home for the foreseeable future. That night I made myself a campfire and I cooked up all the meat I had gotten. My goal for the next morning was to go out exploring again and make another attempt at finding life. For the next few days I wandered about Looking for players, but I found no one. This is when I felt the true scale of this world, and just how big it is. I decided I would just get on with it. I'm alone, and that's just how it is. And for many days I survived by myself, slowly gathering resources, making this cave feel more homely. And this brings us back to the start. Of how I ended up in a cave alone, by the events that have happened. I could have just started my 100 days here. But I wanted to tell you the full story of how it ended up like this. But now the admins have given us a new world. For people to forge their own story. But with some simple rules. And they are 
We are only allowed to live in this custom world. We can adventure out beyond it, but we can only settle here. It's hardcore. If you die, you're gone. And the most interesting part of all, there are 13 god weapons scattered across the map. These weapons are powerful, but their main role is to tell you who owns what land. This show is all gonna be about building up nations and defending yourself from others that want to cause harm. And my goal is to build a nation that will bring the world stability and wage war on anyone who tries to stop that. Welcome to my new 100 days series. Let's see how long I will survive for. So going back to the story, with my goal now for the series of protecting the world and squishing anyone who wants to upset that, I knew I would need to build my own nation with like-minded people that hopefully who just want to survive and thrive together. So with the resources that I had gathered over the days, I built a beacon right by the waterway with hopes that people would be attracted by this build and that they would see my sign. I hope one day to make a great nation here. One that everyone on the server respects. Two days later, I logged on the server. I didn't notice much at the start, but then I looked down and there was life and it was bustling. People had seen the beacon and a town was being created right in front of my eyes. The beacon had worked and over the next few days, I got to know all these people. We all had the same goal in mind, but time was ticking against us. We needed to find the god weapon for our land so no one could contest our town. If we find the god weapon, we are the rightful people for this land. We own it, so we need to find it. And we did. And a few days later, there was great excitement because the god weapon for our land had been found. That was one worry we didn't have to think about now. Stealthy, the miner of the group, had found it up in the mountains. It was a hammer called the Stormlander, which looked absolutely epic. And there was a book that read, Congrats, you have just found yourself a god weapon. You are the rightful king or queen of this land. These weapons are responsible for showing who owns what continents. The person who owns these weapons are the rightful owners. Without this weapon, your claim to this land is false. Look on Discord to see what lands you own with this specific weapon. We had done it. We found the weapon. We owned this land. This was everything we now own, rightfully. It doesn't mean people can't contest it though. We now had this great weapon, but it can't just be given to someone. We need to take a vote for who's going to be our king or queen. Who's gonna lead us? So Sorrow here decided to build the town hall. Right here where the beacon was. It felt fitting. It's the thing that brought us all together. A town hall should go here. This is where the vote will be taking place. One weekend later and the great town hall was built by the amazing community that we had. Look at this building, it looks amazing. It stands out over all the rest of the houses, which it should. This is our main meeting area. This is the council room. The place where we solve all debates and where we log all the citizens living in the land. This is amazing. Later that day, the vote took place. Myself, Soccer and Red Shadow were running for king or queen. Everyone took their turn taking their speech. For my plan, uh, what I will do is if I'm king, um, I plan to expand our commerce of our wood trade and I plan to make it so that we sell wood to every continent on this earth. I would like to be queen because I would like to, of course, expand our village within our own island and also other islands. I want to bring stability, peace and offer refuge to everyone on the server and crush anyone who attempts to try and oppose that. Then everyone voted. And by a landslide, Soccer had won the vote. He was now our ruler, our leader, whatever you want to call him. 
And Sucker got straight to ruling. He suggested we should name the town. The capital city of this nation. And since the god weapon that we own is called the Stormlander, I said we should name the town Storm's Landing. A bit of a Game of Thrones reference. But all this didn't matter, because over the excitement, we were publicly broadcasting that we were voting for king or queen of our nation. To the whole server to see. And a certain player was moving in to seize the opportunity. He stormed the village and stormed the town capital, where every single citizen in the town was. This was a takeover. Emil demanded from Soccer that he hands over the god weapon, which, after an awkward standoff, Soccer hands over the weapon. And I am not mad at him at all for this. He did the right thing. For doing this, no blood was dropped. Emil was now our ruler. We were now governed by him and his nation. We were a part of that now. And for now, we had to respect that. This is what this server is all about. It's about politics. It's about evil versus good. And while we have been trying to build a nation, Emil had just been taking nations from others, all their hard work. Emil had managed to strike again. He didn't burn down our town like he did last time. This time, I feel like he did something much worse. He had stolen all our hard work and claimed it for himself. I feel like as a player and as a leader, I had let my team down. And in the next hundred days, I will need to take this town back or die trying. Once again, I just want to say thank you to Monster Legends for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to download the game from the description to start today.